Toyota GR Corolla. Is it worth the hype? Now let's find out. <laughs> uh, spoiler alert, yeah, it is. There are transportation devices that get people from point A to point B, like Toyota's Corolla. Then there are cars that deliver drivers to a joyous place, like Toyota's Corolla, if it's a GR Corolla. This is not a Marvel multiverse alternative reality, it exists in our dimension. Some enthusiasts feel it's as engaging as BMWs of yore, that it helps good drivers become great ones, and that it makes protein shakes with half the calories. Okay, that would be a blender, and this is no appliance. Along with the GR86 and GR Supra, Toyota has put some grr in its lineup, so Big T's reputation for making boring cars needs revisiting. This is not an all-show, little-go trim package. GR Corolla is truly a high-performance hot hatch. Its closest competitor is Volkswagen Golf R. And it's kind of a bargain, if you can get it at MSRP. With shipping, the base core model starts at $37,000. It's all asphalt jockeys really need. Toyota has handed over a circuit edition coming in at 44 grand. It adds larger brakes with Brembo calipers. They stop quite nicely, thank you very much. There's a vented aluminum hood, a forged carbon fiber composite roof, and upgraded cockpit materials such as ultra suede seats, red stitching too. A higher performance Maurizio model adds 7,000 bucks to the circuits tab and removes the back seat. Good if you intend on tracking it often. Keeping the Corolla name adds a halo, or should I say a crown, to the automotive equivalent of a beige baseball cap. This could easily qualify for a new name. Sure, it starts with the Corolla hatchback. About the only body panels that it shares with the circuit are the doors. It's nearly two and a half inches wider than a civilian model. Up front, there are McPherson struts. In back, it's double wishbone multi-link. All of the wheels are driven. That's what this means. Normally, the power split is 60% front, 40 rear. It can be set to vector 70% to the back tires or dial it in 50-50. The shoes are Michelin Pilot Sports on 18-inch wheels. The Japanese factory that crafts the GR adds bracing to the floor, hundreds of spot welds, and three meters of chassis adhesive. While the GR offers more, it also offers less when it comes to cylinders. The 1.6-liter three-cylinder turbo here makes 300 horsepower and 273 pound-feet of torque. Impressive. It's the engine Toyota tucks into the Yaris GR, forbidden fruit in the US. Three cylinders can be prone to vibration. A balance shaft and liquid-filled powertrain mount smooths out any shakes. The triple exhaust reduces back pressure. Also, it looks awesome. All GRs get a six-speed anti-theft device. Uh, can't drive a manual? It's not too late to learn, or shop elsewhere. Clutch, heft, and take-up is about perfect. Not too heavy, not too light. There are drive modes that change the power split and the instrument cluster graphics. Track mode certainly gives better information when it comes to the rev range. A G-meter, too. So there's a good amount of information happening in nearly any setting. No head-up display of any kind. The dampers are fixed, no adjustments. GR Corolla isn't savagely fast. Zero to 60 happens in just under five seconds, but it is satisfying. Once you hit 3,000 RPM, this car really pulls if you can keep the engine in the power pan. It really cooks. Between all-wheel drive and the torque curve, it's pretty tough to chirp the Michelins. Maybe if you turn off the traction control and dump the clutch. Uh, by the way, there's a hill holder feature for steep Seattle streets. 
The shift action is right up there with the best of them, like Miata and Cadillac V Blackwing. It's light, it's crisp, it's mechanical. And after a while, you just kind of forget that it's there. It becomes a subconscious thing, which is about the best thing that you can say about a manual transmission. I've heard that drivers that like to heel and toe find the pedal placement less than ideal. Uh, truth be told, I'm lousy at that, so it's not an issue for me. Rev matching is just a push button away. The engine note gives off a nice snort. Doesn't sound like a three cylinder and it's not obnoxious to everybody outside. Uh, speaking of sounds, there is some wind noise off the A pillars at 70 miles an hour. On tight winding roads, that'll be the furthest thing from your mind. GR Corolla is a grin factory. It has that elusive quality that the best driver's cars have. Pushing this 3,250 pound car to its lofty limits is unwise on public roads since this Corolla is extremely capable and you never know what might be behind that fun tight bend. That's what the track is for. But the clairvoyant nature of the GR makes every trip to pick up milk, eggs, and bread a smile, unless you're dairy or gluten intolerant. Eh, that's not Toyota's fault. You'll go looking for tight corners to sling this into, and it'll make you take the long way home. And here's another thing. The size of the GR Corolla is just right. Steering is on the light side of heavy, about perfect, and there's feel coming up through the wheel. This doesn't replace the overall experience that a BMW or Porsche offers. As tight as this structure is, the Germans have extra starch in their architecture, plus more premium cockpits. But hey, they're a lot more expensive. Ride quality? Well, considering what kind of car this is, normally this is the part of the review where I talk about burst kidneys and fillings rattling out, but even though the suspension is firm, it's very docile. This could easily be a daily driver. So sorry, dentists, you're not gonna get any extra revenue out of this car. There's a solid suite of ADAS technology. The latest Toyota Safety Sense offers automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection, a pretty darn good lane keep assist for those rare times that you want some co-piloting and adaptive cruise. Yeah, on a manual. If you want great fuel economy out of a Corolla, well, maybe buy the hybrid. The EPA rates the average of the GR at 24 MPG, and that's using specified premium fuel. But really, this is a lot more fun to drive. I know, I've driven both. The cabin is a step up from regular grade Corollas, uh, still, Let's call this business-like. The circuit adds some crimson accents and upgrades the seat material, but it's not as if Toyota is trying to outdo Mercedes AMG. It's keeping the GR affordable. The front drive Civic Type R and Volkswagen GTI get the nod for looks in this class. No sunroof either, if that's a must. Step up to a Jag if you crave ambiance. Seats, while nicely bolstered, should handle even larger drivers. No memory settings or even power. But I don't see owners loading this car out. The user interface looks blah, but runs the Toyota tech so you can just ask it to do things. Hey Toyota, I'm looking for a decent cup of coffee. I found 15 results. The first is Cafe Passionato Coffee Roastery and Tasting Bar at 21st Avenue West. Would you like to go to that one? Yeah, that's pretty good. Eventually talking to your car requires a data plan. Yes Hard buttons? Yes. And a phone charge pad, though it didn't play well with my iPhone 13 Pro. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are wireless. The 800 watt JBL audio sounds better than you'd expect from an eight speaker system. Apparently, my driving is made evil twin car sick. So I'll be telling you about the back seats, starting with the door openings that are kind of small. Um, headroom is decent, same with knee room. Foot and leg room a little bit on the tight side. Gotta remember, this is based on the Corolla hatchback. It has a shorter wheelbase. I like the cup holder here, the little storage cubby, but 
No door pockets. Hey, tell them about the pockets on the seat. Yes, yes, I will. See, pockets on both seat backs. He really likes that. Since there is no center console, you can share this area with the folks up front. Same with the uh, power ports here. The drive shaft tunnel isn't too intrusive. The issue back here is legroom, so pessimists won't like this back seat. But optimists will say, hey, a performance machine with a somewhat usable back seat? Sign me up. Um, that's the way I think of this. No one mistakes this for grandma's Corolla. It's not GT High Stealthy. The visual says, let's hoon places. The circuit changes GR's look slightly, especially the carbon fiber roof and vented hood. The styling is aggressive enough that a couple living on the road where we shot running footage came out to yell at us, even though we were driving below the speed limit. Another local went full on road rage, gravel spraying the Corolla with his Ford pickup and later a Jeep Wrangler. Yeah, twice. This is a Corolla that might get owners attention that they don't want. Like Jessica Rabbit, it's just drawn that way. The great thing about GR's hatchback form factor is this is performance with practicality, though maybe not quite as much as the regular Corolla hatchback. The battery is positioned back here, sticking up a bit. The storage compartment takes up space too, but at least it's a good place to stash small things. Would be nice if Toyota molded in some bag hooks. That never hurts. This isn't a deep trunk. Drop the backs and in Maurizio mode, uh, remember that model eliminates the back seat. There's decent space. I'll guesstimate 45 cubic feet. Toyota has no specs. Seats up the way I generally two ply test. There's around 18 cubic feet. The standard Corolla hatch will take on four packs. The GR only loads three. I tried a number of different ways. I suppose that's better than a Miata, huh? Time for red light, green light. Green light. Did I mention the GR is fun to drive? The six speeds shifter belongs in the transmission hall of fame. The base model is all that's needed for serious fun. And for a performance car, it's a decent daily driver. Yellow lights. Priced well, there could be a long wait or additional dealer markup involved. As a usable hatchback, the trunk is kind of small. For flying under the radar, the GR look isn't overly subtle. Red light. For a car bumping up on 45 grand, the cabin says economy car. GR is on the thirsty side and wants the good stuff. And the back seat is a little tight. Some people won't understand this car. I get it. High performance Corolla is the very definition of an oxymoron. And I understand that a three cylinder engine will cause enthusiasts to ponder, but finagle a test drive. And chances are you'll be smitten before snicking into fourth gear. GR Corolla is a performance bargain. There are cars that are twice the price that aren't half as much fun. You'll want to just take this car out and drive the wheels off of it just to do it, which is what I'm doing. I mean, I've actually got lots of work that I should be doing, but I'm out here just driving this car because it's so much fun. So if there's no video next week, blame the GR. A guy's got to have some fun now and then. This is a Corolla that serves up entertainment every day of the week. Buy a GR Corolla and Toyota throws in a National Autosport Association membership for the first year, plus a high performance driving experience. And once again, I encourage any hard driving to be reserved for the track. Photography and editing can make things look more exciting than they are. Public roads are a bad place to flog a car hard. Here's why. On this tight blind curve, I was below the speed limits. Good driving. Sometimes the best skill is anticipating trouble. Okay, dad talk over. In this video, we went all out. Car to car shots, drone shots, and it's all because of Martin Campbell here and Rob Calero of the Fine Driven Car Review team. And remember, um, if you like this channel, please support it using Super Thanks on YouTube and Venmo. I still need to buy them lunch for this shoot. Plus, my daughter's getting married. <laughs> Just saying. Before I go, I mentioned that the roof of this car is made out of forged carbon fiber composites. 
This material was developed here in Seattle. Yeah, it was a partnership between Boeing, the University of Washington, and Lamborghini. Back in the day, I actually got to visit the lab. In fact, I was going to do this two camera piece in front of the building where the lab used to be. Um, and I had permission and then I got kicked out. Um, apparently there are super secret things going on there. This is your best look that I could give you from the street. I've been kicked out of some of the nicest places in Seattle. I'm very used to it, uh, even though I had permission initially. Oh well. And if I remember correctly, the first structural use of forged carbon fiber was in the Lamborghini Aventador. And if they were involved in a crash, they were sent to the University of Washington so that they could study the material. Thanks for watching. Remember, subscribe to this channel, uh, click notifications. You can follow me on social media, but if you have a question or a comment, just leave it here, okay? All right, it's easier. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.